What's going on everybody? I'm Commander Restless Corpse and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Now I decided, because I found this cool ass Earth like, is a neutron star system, but there is an M star. And uh it's actually got a water world as well, which I'm gonna go check out after this, but um I, I wanted to just kinda get a cool shot. Like I've never actually done this where um you pull up next to a planet and position it just so like you can see the sunrise and I think that's really cool you know it's just it seems to me that I don't know I don't know why I haven't done that before but it's kind of you know I don't know at risk of sounding cheesy and weird it's kind of serene I guess it's a, at these moments I kind of wish that the time wasn't I guess realistic scale so that I could see the actual sunrise without having to sit here for hours recording um, and at some point I might do that maybe after I've I've gotten back to the bubble and you know done things and reacquainted myself maybe I'll find something and do like a time lapse or something like that I think it'd be really cool but this is this is Earth, like, number 13, I believe. It's undiscovered, which I'm, I think is pretty cool. I've been sitting here for a while, just kind of listening to it. You can hear, like, birds chirping and sometimes little what sounds like radio chatter. That's probably just, you know, my ship scanning or whatnot, because I do have it targeted. I think that's that's why it's doing that, but I don't know. You know, you kind of kind of forget about things like this when you're just jumping around from system to system scanning. You know, I used to talk about how absolutely beautiful this game is, and there are mo it's just like moments like this that make, I guess, exploring kind of worth it, you know? In any case, let's get out there because there is also a water world that I need to grab. So I'll see you guys in a second. So today at work, I was cruising through Reddit, like I do, and I saw a thread about Endgame in Elite Dangerous. And it was a guy talking about how it'd be really cool if in Endgame you could make your own stations and defend those stations and, uh, you know, kind of have, like, an Endgame where people would come and try, either try to usurp your station or just, you know, hang out in your station. And it's something that I've talked about several times in previous videos, how it'd just be really awesome if you could build yourself a home. But I don't feel that that would be a proper Endgame. Now, to be honest, Elite Dangerous doesn't really even need an Endgame. It's not really that kind of game. Like, the Endgame in this technically is like pvp you know you get to where you need to get and you get the ship that you want you outfit the ship that you want and you get enough money for a bunch of rebuys and you go pvp i mean that's essentially the end game but i was thinking what if there was a different type of end game and what i have what i'm envisioning and what i think would be really awesome would be a true end game like mmo style i guess uh where you would band together with other commanders and there would be systems that are controlled by pirates or other factions. Maybe the end game could have something with PV or P like power play to make power play kind of viable. Uh, if the end game, it would be PVP ish, I guess if it was power play, but kind of PVE VP or PV PVE where you are not only uh, fighting against, NPCs, but also, you know, other commanders that are pledged to that faction. Uh, it would be really cool if some systems had, like, strongholds, you know what I mean? Uh, and they kind of, they do, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, an, a stronghold, say, a station with factions in it that defend that station. And when you get close, obviously, they would aggro to you and interdict you or... Uh, you know, if you get close in normal space, would obviously attack you. You'd have to obviously drop into attack. But it'd be really cool if, like, the end game consisted of doing these missions. And I know there's already missions to attack, like, planetary bases and stuff like that. But I'm talking about on a very 
larger scale. I'm talking about on a scale that is so massive that you would not be able to do it alone. So you would wing up with three other people because I believe the wing size, like maximum, is four people in a wing, something like that. It would be really awesome if you had to get several wings together to assault an entire system, or at least a station, or you know, multiple stations to to try and take control over a system. It would be like actual war. I'm not talking about just a combat zone or a conflict zone or whatever. I'm talking about an actual war around a station or around a planet. Uh, you know, just where it would take, you know, uh, several wings of commanders working together to take out loads of NPCs with the occasional commander mixed in there, an enemy commander. Uh, like, obviously, if you're part of this faction you could choose to come to the NPC's defense and fight against these other commanders. Um, but the object would be to actually take control. Like, there would be an objective, obviously, uh, that you would have to either destroy or stay close to long enough um, uncontested. So, you know, it. I, I just think that would be really cool. It would be like a raid. You know what I mean? You would raid these systems with several other commanders. I would say like three or four wings. And there would just be these large-scale battles against NPCs and other commanders alike. Uh, obviously, it would be more in favor of the defenders. Because they would have the NPC wings. Plus, you could have player wings uh, assisting these NPC wings to fight off the invaders. Now, I, would, I think it would be really cool if... Um, what am I? What? Wait a minute. Oh, huh. The one that I chose was like right in front of me. I was panicking there for a second. Thought I was going toward the, uh, the neutron star. Uh, it would be cool if there wasn't like a limit to the wings. You know, if you wanted to get together with fifty of your friends, you could do that. Now, obviously, the game, the way the instancing works and stuff like that, doesn't really lend very well to that. Uh, but this is just wishful, wishful thinking. You know, I'm not saying that. It would be super easy to implement this or anything like that. But I think it'd be really cool. Like, your objective is to destroy or take control of all of the stations in a system. So you would go with your absolutely massive force to each station. Or you can split up your, your, uh, your little army to try and take all the stations at once. Which would obviously divide up the defenders. Uh, because we all know that it's easier to take out... NPCs and it is to take out players. So if you were to spread your your fighting like invasion force over multiple stations, then obviously the defenders uh, would have to spread like the the player commander defenders would have to spread their forces then as well. And there will be a lot of strategy to it. I think it would be really cool. And you can take over a system for your power play faction. It wouldn't be you know. I guess you wouldn't really get any kind of like crazy benefit from it other than knowing that you aided your faction which I you know I think is cool I think power play really needs some kind of infusion of something awesome uh, I wasn't around when power play was first implemented at, but from what I hear it was not what everybody wanted and it just kind of fell flat even though I kind of enjoy it and I've talked about this in a previous video um, I like strategy type games and taking over territories and things like that. I used to play the Romance of the Three Kingdoms games a lot when I was younger. Uh, I played a whole bunch of them. I played Nobunaga's Ambition, stuff like that. Gemstone, if you ever remember Gemstone. Uh, I believe that was on the Genesis. That was a really cool game. They were all made by th this company called Koei. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but they made like the Dynasty Warriors games and all that stuff. They actually made a really cool RPG on the Super Nintendo that I fully intend to play on my channel at some point. Uh, but it is a really huge endeavor to play this game because it's not your standard RPG. Like, it starts out that way. It's called Anendo, Way of the Ninja. And uh, you start out as, like, a an Iga ninja in the, in the province of... in the Iga province. And Nobunaga comes with his army and destroys your village or whatever at, while you're away and and obviously uh you want to take revenge so you go on this epic rpg quest 
uh, enlisting followers and things like that, and going through feudal Japan, you know, from city to city, tracking down Nobunaga. And what's cool about that game, and why I say it's not your traditional RPG, because it is turn-based and all that stuff, it is definitely a JRPG. But the reason that it's not traditional is once you get to a certain point in the game where you are ready to take on Nobunaga, you don't just go to his place and take him out like a normal RPG would say. You have to rally the country to your side. You know what I mean? So generally what you do is you go and you sell your services as a ninja through this huge strategy game style game where um, in order to finally confront Nobunaga, I forget what, which province he calls home, but you have to you have to take territories from him and you have to reduce his power in Japan to where he is he is surrounded in one province and then you go into that province as your party and try to take him out but you you know sabotage missions uh reduce like his influence on a, a certain province through sabotage through trade routes uh embargoes and things like that doing all kinds of stuff like that so that you and you're working with the the i guess the local province or whatever province you know government and you're you're doing these missions sanctioned by this government and then when you lower a province's strength enough you invade it with your province and then it turns into a big like a big battle uh and this is all on super nintendo i mean it was way ahead of its time it didn't get a, a really a lot of attention because it was an unorthodox rpg i guess uh, and it wasn't obviously one of the big names um but i really liked it and I kind of forgot where the hell I was going with this, but it's just power. Oh, so power play. So, um, I would really like to see power play fleshed out a little bit and given a purpose. Like there's really currently no way, no reason to even get into power play other than maybe PVP because you're, you know, able to attack, um, other power play factions without getting a bounty or whatever. So I think that in this, end game scenario idea that I have uh, it would all be done through power play so like let's say let's take me for example being part of ALD obviously I'm not right now because I dropped it until I get back to the bubble but let's say that I am part of ALD and I want to take out Edmund and uh, or, or like my not necessarily I want to take it out but that is the current goal of ALD at the time is to attack Edmund strong like territories and take over you know take territory away from Edmund McMahon or Edmund Mann or whatever the hell his fucking name is uh, <laughs> so there would be raids against his strongholds that are on the front you know on the battlefront of of ALD versus if there even is a front uh, this is just an example uh, it could be anybody it could Leong Rui I think is really close to ALD space so let's take him for example um so you would get a whole bunch of other ALD people or even other empires like Aisling, you know, or Felicia or whatever. And, uh, and you all band together and go and attack a territory. Now, obviously, those, uh, those pledged to Leong Rui would get a message like you're about to be attacked. Um, so get your ass over here and help. And then these commanders could rally a defense in whatever system is about to be attacked. And they would, you know, come to its defense. And there would be not only a huge PvP battle, but also with NPCs and stuff. Now, obviously, the attacking force would not have any NPCs. So they'd have to use strategy. They'd have to use, you know, misdirection and, and things like that. And it'd get really fucking cool. But in the end, let's say if the defenders when like they destroy enough of the uh the attackers or even if there wasn't a limit it's just when the attackers finally fucking give up then the defenders have won uh 
But if the defenders won, obviously, maybe you wouldn't be able to attack that territory again for, like, say, until the next power play cycle or something like that. But if the attackers won, then it would get rid of all this undermining and and uh, expansion and, like, you know, whatever the hell all the other stuff is. Because that stuff is what people don't like. That's kind of boring. Uh, all Like, the expansion would all be done in real time. It would be wars and and you know, giant battles out in space or battles on planets. If you want to take over a planetary outpost, you actually have to go down onto the planet and there could be like SRV battles and and just low orbit battles or even surface battles, you know, in the skies and stuff like that. And it would just be absolutely epic. And I think that would be really cool. But... The way the current game is and interesting and stuff, I don't think it would be pop. It would be possible, and that's really unfortunate because uh, I think that you know this game is is, is kind of missing a lot of key things that would make PvP and power play fun. But anyway, that was just my idea for PvP. I, I think that it would be really cool to have these giant large scale battles. Anyway, that's all the time I've got, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. Uh, also, <laughs> like, I had a really terrible night at work, and I was going to come on here, and I was going to bitch about it and all the things that really just upset me about work. But you know what? I think my last couple videos were kind of negative. So I wanted to just throw a positive out there because I do love the game. And as much as I may get frustrated with certain design choices in this game, that does not mean that I don't like the game. And we're going to go up here now. Because I want to stay kind of in the middle of this patch. All the way to home, I guess. The bubble. Uh, but I didn't want to throw out another. Even though the negativity has... Only one of the videos was negative against... Elite Dangerous. The other one was against the Division, and I'm still not happy with Division, but I don't want to talk about it. Uh, but I wanted to throw something positive out there and, and and remind you guys that I actually really do love this game. In any case, if you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more videos of Elite Dangerous or any of the other videos that I've done, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you have anything to say, throw it down in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinions on the end game scenario that I outlined and if you think that it would be really cool and uh, if that would kind of rekindle or even spark your interest in power play. Anyway, my name is Commander Russ's Corpse. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'll see you guys in the next video.